Hello class, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, okay. Yes, sir. Fine. Uh, so, we have taken up a course on uh, EC43, which is nothing but system design using HDL, right? So, today my uh, discussion would be the introductory part of it, okay? Um, have you all gone through the syllabus copy? You can unmute and respond. Have you all seen the syllabus copy? Okay. If you have not seen, then uh, I will share the document. Okay. Are you all able to see my screen? Is my screen visible? Uh, I've sent a text message. Are you all able to see my screen? Probably my voice is not audible due to network issues here. Okay, fine. I get the response. Yes, sir. Fine. So let us proceed. I <clears throat> have displayed your syllabus copy here. And uh, this is about your system design using HDL. System design using HDL. And the course code is going to be EC43. Okay. Syllabus. Okay. Uh, we will be starting off with module one, which is nothing but introduction to Verilog. Okay. So in this introduction to Verilog, you have uh, certain uh, topics here, which is nothing but your computer aided design. Okay. Hardware description languages, and uh, you know few other things. So what we will be referring to are two important textbooks here. Okay. Uh, the first one is by Charles Roth, okay, in combination with Lizzie and uh, Lee, okay. So, this is one of the textbooks that we will be referring and the other one is exclusively um, digital system design using EHDL written by Charles Roth. So, these two will be your exclusive textbooks for this uh, subject point of view, okay. And uh, here in module 1, okay. So, we will be starting off with module 1 and in module 1, we have certain topics like uh, computer aided design, uh, then hardware description languages, um, you have uh, Verilog and uh, VHDL, then what are the data types available, operators, okay, then combinational circuits, combinational circuits, then you have some assignments, uh, how Verilog assignments are done, then how procedural assignments are done okay so all these things uh, you will be looking into we will be also looking into few flip-flops how always block can be used control statements then um, uh, multiplexers okay how can we model these registers and uh, counters how can we write a code for them okay so all these we will be discussing in module one so as you all know we have uh, we have uh, 
uh, Google Classroom. So there I will be sharing all the notes, the lecture materials, okay, wherein after the lecture, okay, you all can refer to it and any doubts uh, you can ask me or probably even in the next class we can discuss doubts, okay. So what we will do now is, okay, we will just have an overview of, uh, you know, what is actually happening, okay, in the industry, fine. So these are, you know, some of the list of companies that we have in uh, India, okay, VLSI companies. Now the reason why we are going to study this subject is because we want to get into an industry. So the industry which targets, you know, uh, your HDL, your hardware descriptive language are VLSI industries, okay. So you should be good at uh, Verilog and you should be good at your VHDL. So VHDL was used previously and uh, right now, you know, the language that is being used is Verilog, fine. So that's about your module one. We, are, we will be discussing in detail about uh, Verilog as to how we are going to write what are the rules to be followed in order to, uh, you know, go ahead with the programming structure. So this is just an example as you can see how, you know, uh, I think you would have been very much familiar with these uh, companies here. For example, IBM, Microchip, you would have heard these uh, companies, right? Xilinx, SanDisk, ARM, right? Broadcom, many of the chips that you see, many of the networking uh, equipments that you see, are manufactured by Broadcom, right? Siemens, many of the medical instruments um, in collaboration with Siemens. So all these things, all these things, you know, are actually uh, very much into VLSI industry. Okay, so this is just a, a snap view as to how um, you know you would have even seen uh, Tata Group, right? Tata Alexa. Now. For today's class, what we will do is we will just uh, look into this flow chart, okay, um, as to how your VLSI design actually has a broad bifurcation, okay. So to start off with, your VLSI design has two bifurcations, one is ASIC and the other one is FPGA. So again, your ASIC is nothing but your application specific integrated circuit and your FPGA is field programmable gate array right so these two are the main uh, bifurcations under vlsi design again asic has a few steps to be followed fpga also has a few steps to be followed in between in between asic and fpga you have something called semi custom okay semi custom design so asic is something where you actually build from the scratch okay um, right from the design from the architecture okay you design everything and then finally you give it to the uh, uh, company for you know manufacturing your chip but wherein semi custom is something where few components are already available and you are actually using some other components okay and you are designing few components so this is your semi custom then when you come to fpga fpga you are going to use the kits okay and uh, you are going to have a similar process so we will look into this process in detail okay we will look into it in detail as to what exactly uh, we are going to do with these uh, following steps okay so one thing that you should understand is using your uh, vhdl and verilog okay programming we write uh, the code using software so those most you used software is your xilinx so in xilinx we can use your vhdl programming and verilog programming so we do the programming we run the simulation we see the waveforms if it's fine if it's fine then we proceed if it's not then we get back we check for errors okay we try to debug the errors and then uh, normally okay while coding you will see that you will have a lot of syntax errors so once the syntax errors are rectified okay then it will be your logical errors so logical errors are for example now if i want to do an and operation i should say a and b i should not uh, write a or b and expect an and output 
right so this becomes a logical uh, logical error now if you have not followed the rules then that becomes a syntax error okay for example uh, instead of using a semicolon you would have used a colon right so these are some of the things that uh, you know we will be dis discussing very much in detail okay so i think uh, what we will do is i will uh, share this uh, slide as of now okay these two slides i will be sharing it with you and uh, you can probably look into it okay and uh, we will discuss about this in detail okay as to what is sta what is dft uh, what is drc what is layout what is simulation okay what is meant by you know synthesis okay uh, what is hdl entry uh, gate array what is standard cell all these will be discussed in detail so as of now i want you to you know just have a look at the syllabus okay if possible i will be even sharing the syllabus with you guys and uh, you can look into it and we can get started with our classes from tomorrow okay so treat this as an introductory class to the uh, course okay wherein we'll be discussing very much in detail uh, about the programming structure and many other things okay so if you have uh, any doubts you know you can ask me right now if not then uh, probably we can discuss it in the next class any doubts you can ask me you can unmute yourself and you can ask me. anything that you want to ask Yeah, if you have any doubt, you can ask me. Eldo, Lokesh, Prem, Shreyas, Vasant, Sirish, any doubts, you can ask me. If not, then we'll catch up in the next class. Yes, Sirish, Vasant, any doubt? Mm, your voice is not that audible. Uh, I cannot hear you, Vasant. Uh, if you can probably send send me send me a message on the chat. Not able to hear. Okay, so we will be ending this class today. Okay, and any discussions we will take it forward in the upcoming class. Okay, thank you.